And this one is called the Dreams and Mysteries expansion. And it's going to be adding a bunch of new content into the game, but the main new items that it's going to be adding is a new adventure that is actually an inseparable duo. So if you do choose to play this character, you're actually going to be playing as both a lizard as well as a poisonous frog. But along with this character, this expansion is also going to be adding brand new abilities for all the adventures that are already existing in the game, as well as extended personal quests so that each of the individual characters do have the opportunity to chase their dreams. The main overarching quest that this expansion adds is actually a string of mysterious events happening all over Galzir, and players are going to have to investigate what's actually going on, but you're not going to be able to figure it out on your own. You're actually going to have to team up with an old detective. But like I said, this is also just going to be adding a bunch of new content that you can just go ahead and mix into the game, including new quests, companions, items, and encounters. And if you're not already familiar with this game, this is a cooperative story-driven adventure board game that I have covered in the past during its original launch. And if you do want to learn more about how exactly it plays, I'll just go ahead and roll that previous footage for you now. And this is an open world exploration game that takes place in the same world as the Dale of Merchants and the Dawn of the Peacemakers, which are previous games released by this designer. And in this game, players are going to be completing different quests and meeting different characters, and their actions and decisions are going to affect the world as the game moves forward. And this game plays in Chronicles, similar to Oath, where it's a continuous adventure and the game remembers where you left off. And every time you play it, it's going to pick up in the same state as where you ended in your previous game session. So rather than being a set campaign, you can pick it up and play it as many times as you want. And the game's going to remember all the decisions that you made every time you play. All this remembering is completely built into the game and there's no extra bookkeeping or manual tracking that you'll need to do in order for decisions made in the game to persist into future games. Another really nice thing about this structure is that there's less emphasis on playing with the same game group every time you play. And this game does support solo, cooperative, and competitive modes. For solo or cooperative, you're going to be playing a fixed number of rounds and the competitive mode is played until someone has reached a specific number of prestige points. Each game represents a single month and each round in the game represents a single day. And this game ties that all together with a really neat calendar on the board that tracks the time, but then also different encounters and quests can behave differently depending on the day that they occur. And other markers and events can be added to the calendar to just make it much more of a meaningful part of the game rather than just a counter that triggers the end. There's also a ton of quests and encounters that you can experience in this game. And then also, since some of them will behave differently depending on when you experience them, adds a ton of variety to this game. As you play the game, you'll be linking together all sorts of different stories, and this is all going to be managed through the Book of Adventures. And this is not actually a physical book, instead it's going to be an app that you can have open on your phone or tablet, and it's going to be used to present you the narrative and also comes with a few perks like being completely spoiler free, and the developers can also make changes to it even after the game has been released. Throughout the game, players are going to be building up six different skills and these skills are going to help you for skill checks as you try to complete different quests and encounters that you experience throughout the game. For every skill check you start with five generic dice but then for each type of skill that you have you can swap out one of those generic die for a die that represents one of your skills. If you're at level one of a specific skill that means that you can swap out one die for a die of that type and if you're at level two that means you can swap out two. And depending on the type of objective that you're trying to complete, different skills are going to help you in different ways. Players can also augment their characters with different item statuses and companions that will help them along the way. Depending on the outcome of the encounter, your character or the board could be modified in some way. And to modify the board, you'll be placing down different cards to change areas of the map. Then your character may also be modified with different boosts or afflictions. 